Justin Bieber, what white nonsense is this? Like Y'all already know what time it is, I got the black bean neck on. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> this week was a lot. Like, I can't even tell y'all that this was the first time I ever sat down and just watched the Grammy nominations live. And to see some of these artists respond, specifically Justin Bieber respond to not being placed in the R&B category for his album that sounds like polyphonic ringtones from 2003, fix it, Jesus. But girl, we got a lot of things to talk about. Obama is on his book tour and trying to explain why he couldn't help out black folks, and I'm just not understanding. Megan Thee Stallion's friend, BFF, Kelsey, whatever her name is, is out here, girl, she won't give me Kelsey no gra Grammy because this is out here trying to respond with a diss track um, called Bustin' Back. Um, that might be extra her texting me now. But girl, we got a lot of things to talk about. I hope y'all enjoyed y'all Thanksgiving. I hope y'all ate. I hope y'all resting. Because we got some things we got to drag. So before we get into any of this or anything else, let's go ahead and do our mental check-in. No mental really to do. Like, nothing really to say too much. Um, I actually came to Memphis um, and enjoyed a small little time with my family. Um, and it, I feel like it was, you know, it was worth it. Everybody did what they supposed to do and participated and stuff. And we ate, we did a, like, untraditional, like, Thanksgiving dinner. We did, um, just steaks, uh, which were really, really seasoned and really, really good. Um, salad, uh, baked potatoes, just a non-traditional. My mom didn't feel like doing all of that. And I, I didn't realize how much time goes into cooking all of that, like, cooking, like, macaron cheese, dressing, like all of these things that go like it's way too much but my mama did make me some chitlins and I can't y'all can say what you want baby I ain't had no chitlins in years and I'm gonna eat them they gonna get sopped up okay shout out to my girl <laughs> I love I can't think of a name who be saying it get sopped up um but mental is doing great um I'm, I'm still in Memphis right now I've decided to stay an extra day because I need to finish up do those King Reads videos, do those um, Struggle Plates videos, get those out, and I'm going to leave out early Saturday morning. But with that being said, everything is good. Let's go ahead and drag these girls. Let's go ahead and get into the tea for today. Let's go ahead and start with this Megan Thee Stallion drama with her former best friend, Kelsey. So Kelsey is pressed because Megan slick addressed her in her, um, well, the first song on her new album, um, what is it, Good News? And sis basically dragged her. Um, it, it wasn't really too much. Like, Megan didn't really hit her too hard, but she was just, you know, saying some stuff. And so, girl, somebody must have gave her some powder to sniff, and then she said, let me go ahead and record something. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm. Go. Mm. Shots. Mm. Shots. A little hand to see. Ain't nothing lucky. Where right that? Like she decided to record a um a diss track called Bustin' Bad. And it was like very lackluster. It was just it sounded it really sounded bad. Like it it it, it didn't do it didn't flow, it just didn't move. Uh but the girls did have me scream when they said that her album but the girls did have me hollering when they said that uh Kelsey's single might outsell Megan's album. <laughs> Y'all ain't right. Girl, I got so much to say about that. I actually listened to Megan's album on the way back here to Memphis, on the way to Memphis. Just let, let's just say that to expect an In the Middle episode coming out sometime in the next week because I listened to it and I have some thoughts. It's also some folks also have some thoughts. So get ready for that. But, um... Kelsey, like, since you, you've been talking about this for months, like, you have been addressing Megan, you've been saying something to, about making shots and stuff at Megan for, like, months. Like, this happened in when? Like, this summer, and you, you've you been saying stuff, Megan responded, now you want to be out here clapping back. It just, it's just, like, folks would do that. They would nitty pick, nitty pick, nitty pick, and then when somebody respond back and clap back, now it's like, now nah, I'm in distress. No, girl, you, like, you've been picking at me, so leave me the hell on. Speaking from experience, it's just like, leave me alone, like, girl, I'm trying to do my own little thing. Um, but Kelsey said, girl, no, I want a part of the action, too. And it's giving very much that. Like, Kelsey was um, accusing Megan of, like, smashing one of her friends or exes or something. I was like, girl. You said, uh, I want niggas, I want them, I don't know what the fuck, I want niggas, you got us. We all know that I ain't never wanted none niggas. It was really, come to find out, I, come to find out, you 
nigga behind my back that I was on. What is you even saying? She was on Instagram live addressing this mess. I'm just like, is it that serious? Is it really that serious to do all of that? I feel like when it's like, like, I really don't like when things like this happen. And y'all know I'm speaking from personal experience. When you are two friends and both of y'all have like, y'all like known and stuff, like girl, don't say anything. Like just go do your part, do it. But it's always that the one that is nitpicking and continuously saying something because they are insecure and they keep, keep, keep doing it. And then when they find a response, it's just like, girl, I've given you time and now it's my time to speak because we could have just not said anything. Now it's, oh girl, this track. Girl, it's so familiar, but I'm not releasing no diss track. Um, but if I did, it damn sure would do better than the shit I've seen. Um, <laughs> but since I'm doing good over here, over here living better, eating better, but it's just like, girl, can we do better? Can we just move on about our bills, business, Kelsey? Can you worry about some other stuff? Maybe you can sell some flat tummy tea or some hair or something. Move on about your business. Uh, speaking of music, I want to drag the Grammys, um, I, and I want to drag the folks who are somebody, one of my followers on Twitter. See, I wish y'all would stop being so pressed about these, these crack up shows. <laughs> and honestly, I wish that we could, but the Grammys hold so much in this world that we are in, um, and they continue to show us that they really don't care about black and brown art. Um, it is completely disgusting that Brandy was not nominated for something from with her album. I think Borderline definitely should have got a nod. Um, and I think like that album, Brandy's B7 was actually pretty good. Um, I, like, but you know, I love me some Never Say Never, honey. I know y'all know I love me some Never Never Say Never and all her other works. But Brandy has been putting out some good body of work over time and for her to be, you know, in this game still out here pulling strong and like the Grammys didn't give her anything. Um and you got Justin Bieber was nominated for a pop award and he don't like that. So he out here dragging it. Um I don't know why the hell Black Parade got nominated for anything. Black Parade sounded like shit. That was actually Black Parade and that other song that Pharrell and Jay-Z did both of them were probably the worst songs I've heard, including Kelsey's for 2020. Like, both of them were giving COVID to my ears. Like, Black Parade was terrible. I, I just didn't, I just didn't, like, I don't know why she, I don't know why she got nominated for that. I definitely think, um, from what I've heard, Black is King deserved a little thing because the way y'all talk about the artistic stuff, I have not watched Black is King. I probably won't ever watch it. I'm good. But a lot of people were moved by it, so I think it should have gotten for, for the film thing. Uh, but, girl, I just, I really just, I, I don't. I don't be understanding the Grammys. I really don't be understanding. There's a couple of other folks who got snubbed. Um, who else? Um, they said, y'all, girl, JoJo didn't get something. She should have got something. Who else was it? Uh, there was a couple of other people who didn't, there was no mention. It was like they didn't. And, girl, some of these artists were like, Tiana Taylor was like shady about it. The weekend didn't get nothing. The weekend didn't get nothing surprising. People were actually surprised because the weekend's music has been playing like nonstop. And some folks were mad at BTS not getting nominated. And BTS is that Korean K-pop music that I do not listen to. I don't listen to it. Like I heard one song, I think I like it. Na 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 like girl. Is that, is that BTS? I really don't even know. I hear it everywhere. But just because you hear it everywhere does not mean that it's it's a good song. I don't think that's like I don't I don't think that means it's a good song. This might be just mean it's trendy. Um, but the weekend didn't get nominated, and um, some like there are some rumors going around. I think I heard that they said that they didn't like that the weekend was not like make a decision to perform. I think he's supposed to be performing at the Super Bowl, and they wanted him to perform at the Grammys and stuff. So they didn't nominate him for anything. Um, and honestly, let me read up what he said. The weekend tweeted this and said the Grammys remain corrupt. You owe me, my fans, and the industry transparency. <laughs> corrupt. Like, I think people are starting to like see like corrupt. What are you talking about? Like, this is not no government system. This is not like this is an award show. Like, calm down. This is a war show. Like, sis, corrupt. No, it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Like, I just, it, as much as I think some artists definitely should be recognized for their work, the way y'all speak and the way y'all describe y'all getting snubbed, y'all compare this to, like, the end of a, 
of a systems. I I don't even know what y'all compare it to, like a government falling apart. Like y'all compare this to like something like this this thing that's supposed to be for the people. Like it's corrupt. I don't think that was the right word to to use. I think you could have used a lot of other things, but saying that it's corrupt, I just really don't. I don't get it. Like this is not this is not that. But The Weeknd was pissed about it. Um, artists from Kid Cudi to Tinashe and Scooter Braun, whose client Justin Bieber was in the clear this year with four nominations, expressed their disappointment in the Academy decision to not honor The Weeknd's stellar gear. Girl, like, I just, I really don't care. I really don't care, to be honest. Y'all are rich. Y'all got plenty of money. Um, y'all will survive this. I promise y'all, y'all. If anything, I think smaller artists who are trying to get some name, like, put out some stuff, but not though The Weeknd has sold plenty of albums. He played plenty of money. Girl, you'll be all right. Like, if there's anybody, it should be somebody, a banjo, somebody who really was, like, hustling, 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 who didn't have, the, like, the infrastructure and the support and the team to be able to put out a body of work. Like, I just really don't. I just don't care. Like, it's just like, it's a, it's a damn pandemic. Like, folks are struggling. Like, Thanksgiving is difficult for a lot of folks. Read the room, like, girl. Like, and I think Drake responded and said something about the Grammys, too. Girl, y'all kill me. Y'all kill me. Y'all sound like y'all really be like doing too much for me. But moving on, what else is going on? The people are saying that um, Laura Harvey is going to be adding another Infinity Stone to her gauntlet because she is now rumored to be dating Michael B. Jordan. Uh, there was a picture of this um, spotted getting off a plane in Atlanta. Um, and I think actually Black Panther is getting ready to start shooting. Um, very, very soon. So I wonder is Michael Bill Jordan in Atlanta for that? That's what they got called. They got caught getting off a plane together in Atlanta. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know why Michael B. Jordan would be in Atlanta for any other reasons. Uh, but I think they are starting. And I'm just like, maybe he wanted her to be there with him while he was doing the um, locking in the bubble or something before they started working on Black Panther. That's going to be interesting. I'm also interested in seeing what's going to happen with Black Panther. How they gonna do this with the passing of um, Chadwick Boseman? How are they gonna do that? Are they going to have Sheree take up the mantle um, as that? Girl, that's a mess. There was a rumor going around that Rihanna was supposed to be in Black Panther 2. I was like, girl, no. Rihanna is not gonna be playing in Open Black Panther 2. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but that's what's going on. Moving on. Uh, Dave Chappelle and said that he wanted everybody to boycott Netflix because his show, the Chappelle show, was being aired and he wasn't receiving coin from it. And you know what a lot of his fans started to do? They started to talk about boycotting Netflix. And I'm looking at it like I said, damn, damn, was it like two years ago that this black woman who is a known comedian who's done a lot, who's never really said anything hateful or hurtful of like acts for Netflix to be uh, boycotted because she didn't receive the pay that she was supposed to get? Um, and what did Netflix do? Netflix told Monique, oh, girl, we, we ain't give you nothing else. That's what it is. But with Dave Chappelle, they took the show down. They took Chappelle's show off of Netflix. Hmm. Let you know what type of world we're living in. Like, girl, they responded quickly. Um, and I don't like it. And I don't care about Dave Chappelle. I don't. I don't really care about Dave Chappelle and his... his like his patriarchy and his misogynoir and his transphobia. I just don't care about Dave Chappelle. I just don't care about him. Um, I just don't. Um, he, like the content that he makes is actually for white folks who believe they're doing good by voting blue. Whew, that's another conversation, another day. Um, I just like Dave Chappelle has been called out for so much stuff and he just seems to not care. So, I don't give a damn about you and your Netflix deal or whatever you got going on. I just don't really care. So, Obama is on his book tour and he has chosen to go to The Breakfast Club. And I think he strategically went on The Breakfast Club because he know that they don't have the range to critique him and to actually ask him questions uh, that are very important uh, to his so-called legacy. Um, and I think, you know, he went on there just a kiki, key key. Uh, And, you know, he can talk his way out of, you know, critique or any criticism coming from the Breakfast Club. And I don't think that that is, like, I don't think, sometimes you have to learn your lane. 
I don't think I will be able to interview Barack Obama on some of the things that he's done. I don't, that's not my lane. Like, I know enough, but I don't know enough to actually, like, that's not my lane. It's not my range. I don't have the range. And sometimes it's okay to admit that. But the Breakfast Club wanted that little check mark for them to prove that they are here doing something for the culture, but they're really not. Like, just a cop out. It's not, it's not, like, it's not real journalism. It's not real journalism. Like, it's a form of journalism. Like, let me not say that because I don't like the, I don't like that. But it's not that tr true journalism where we are actually holding you accountable and asking you these questions and trying to get you to answer them, and you can. So the bullshit answer that you're giving is not working because we already expect that. That's the type of journalism I'm expecting. You're not going to get that from the Breakfast Club. Not with that type of stuff. With other things, probably the music industry, but that's not their strong suit. I mean, DJ Envy's whole politic is um, black excellence, and that shit ain't going to save us. So it's just like... I'll DJ Envy think, oh, as long as my child is going to the best schools and the best learning, we're going to all make it. That's what, that's what that is. Um, so it's just not really doing anything for us. So Barack Obama tried to explain himself of why he couldn't do much for black and brown folks. Like, why he couldn't do much. He said he could not because, um, you know, I can't undo 200 years of stuff. If you cannot do that... Shouldn't that shit tell you that none of this shit is going to ever do anything when you already, you, 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 like it took 200 years to finally get one black president and even then, you know, you kind of ran on that, like we're going to be, this representation, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. Probably won't ever see another black male president for a minute, um, probably won't see one for a minute, um, and even then, Representation is just not enough. You being black is just not. What is your actual politic? Um, because representation is not going to save us. We need to be compensated for the things before this. Like, yeah, that's not enough. Like, you just being black ain't enough. What are you going to do to fix all of these things? Because a lot of y'all who do get pro pushed forward, y'all be so anti-black because it's like, girl, you can't be black and quote unquote be radical and actually won't change for your people and want your people to come out of something. No, girl, you got to be in the center. And very much Barack Obama uh, was very much in the center. Like he was not progressive. And we're going to have the same thing with this new administration. Yeah, COVID might actually kind of get better. We might see some type of quote unquote normalcy, but that normalcy is not making, it's not, it's, it's not doing anything for black folks. But so when you say normalcy, you're saying normalcy for white folks. Like just a little bit part of here and there, but not too much. As long as we, our unemployment rate is not over 6%, we good. But black unemployment is like 14%. It's like to be expected. So Barack, Barry, get your shit together. Girl, I almost forgot that Cardi B and Wiz Khalifa got into it. So the Grammys have caused so much drama that... Our girl, y'all girl, Nicki Minaj um, tweeted and talked about in 2012 when she did not receive a Grammy for Best New Artist. It was given to somebody named Von Iver. Um, and, you know, it started a conversation. And Wiz Khalifa responded to this conversation after a fan reminded him, I'm sure he already knew, that he didn't get an um, award for his song, uh, When Will I See You Again? Girl, y'all know what song I'm talking about. But that song, well, that song was actually beautiful, and he didn't get an Grammy for that. Um, and Wiz Khalifa had responded to it and said this. Most self-made artists have this problem, which several Twitter users, including Cardi B, 28, herself took it as a dig toward the WAP rapper. Cardi responded by tweeting a screenshot of an Instagram DM that Khalifa sent her in 2016 of September, which read in part, you're, whatever, doing a great job and the way you address things is admirable. Keep your light shining and don't let others take it. She captioned the screenshot, they really support you when you grind it at the top, then it's a different story when you make it. Now, after she said that, Azalea Banks came up and said, girl, you bird. <laughs> I know you're not talking because when everybody was coming down on Nicki Minaj, you had no problems not saying anything. So it's just like, sis, don't try to give us this kumbaya now when you was out here doing the same thing. And as much as I, you know, be not here for Azalea Banks, it does make sense. It's like, sis, like, girl, when they was coming at her, like, 
like you didn't speak up, you didn't say anything, like you just kept kept quiet on a lot of stuff. But both of y'all was going back and forth, and it was a whole drama with y'all. So it's just, I mean, it is what it is. But um, Khalifa responded and said, "I still support you. Nothing's changed. You're self-made in my book. You're self-made in my books." He also told Twitter followers that he don't want a Cardi Wiz war going on for no reason. Minaj was not the only artist who expressed frustration with the Grammy Awards, of course. Uh, but what's funny is Nicki Minaj did tweet um, around that night and like laughing my ass. Be like, ha, 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 ha. Very petty. Very Nicki Minaj. Um, we don't know if she was laughing at the feud with Wiz Khalifa or what. But, <laughs> girl, like... The fans like be making stuff a mess. That being said, I want to end this video dragging Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray, you are the most irrelevant person I have ever seen or ever talked about on this platform ever. You keep getting your mouth in trouble. You keep like just saying dumb shit. It just spews out of your mouth. So Lisa Ray doing some YouTube uh, show on Fox or whatever, Fox O. She was talking about Holly Berry and she said that the rumors and stuff she heard is that Holly Berry box ain't really hitting on nothing. And um, Holly Berry responded and said, hey girl, ask such and such about my box. But it's just like, that, she was using that as a reason why Holly Berry can't keep a man. Knowing that Holly Berry has experienced domestic violence and you out here like, like Lisa Ray, your whole career is one damn role. Like, the, the, you just mortal, you just immortalized um, Diamond. But you're not Diamond. You're not a Diamond in the Rough. You're not anybody. Like, girl, you are a piece of coal that just so happens to be lighter or light skin. Like, nobody's really checking for you, Lisa Ray. And, just, like, if you're going to get on here, this is, this is what gets me when these folks be coming up with these shows. It's not nobody to know what their real expertise or care or careful of what they're saying or being conscious of what's going on in the conversation. It's just Kiki Session. Like, and I'm, I, like, Holly Berry could have said all type of crazy stuff and responded, but she, you know, like, she was a G, she said, hey, ask about my boss. It just wasn't it, so I just, Lisa Ray is just, oh my gosh, like, I just, like, read the room, like, or read for that, just read. I mean, we know you ain't doing that, Diamond. I mean, you said she was working at the Players Clubs to go to school, but was you actually reading in the books? We'll find out on the next episode. Um... But I think that's all I want to cover. Um, I think, is there, is there anything else? I think that's about it. But I hope y'all have a wonderful evening. I wanted to give y'all a cute King of Reeds video before the end of the week. Because we didn't get a chance to get one Thursday because everybody was eating their Thanksgiving dinner. But y'all enjoy y'all Thanksgiving dinner. I love y'all. Make sure y'all social distance, get home safe. Make sure y'all please get tested because, girl, we're going to be seeing some, some COVID numbers go up because of this. Um, because everybody was around their family eating these struggle plates. Make sure you watch the Struggle Play video that I dropped. I love y'all so much. And until next time, I'll talk y'all later on tonight. Bye. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying. <laughs>